Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of November 1st, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological week, and by far the very big news this week has to do with Mercury on Tuesday going direct. But it isn't just about the fact that Mercury is going direct, even though that's really big, that in and of itself tends to bring with it fresh perspectives and fresh energy. Now, it's interesting because I was thinking about the nature of Mercury. Uh, some have conceptualized Mercury as the lower frequency of Uranus. Now, we know a little bit something about Uranus as of late because just as I'm recording this, we recently had a full moon, that Halloween full blue moon that I spoke about last week was hand in hand in conjunction with Uranus. So all of us in at least one area of life found ourselves having an epiphany of sorts or found ourselves really understanding or needing to understand what freedom meant to us and how to align with it. Well, Mercury as the lower frequency of Uranus is also associated with freedom as well, but it's a different kind of freedom. The freedom to choose how you're going to perceive things and the diligence to change your perceptions, your mental habits, what it is that you repeat to yourself again and again, that can be a pathway to freedom as well. The other way that Mercury and the concept of freedom can connect is uh, a philosophical assertion that's been made many times over the centuries. And that is that the only place we are truly free is in our own minds. And that when it is that we are free in our minds, we can experience freedom anywhere. And I think that has to do with the fact that we can choose to focus on what it is that we want, even if we have to train ourselves to practice that very focus and not uh, just default into established ingrained patterns. And so it is now as Mercury moves forward that all of us in some way are going to start to feel a little bit more liberated, uh, are going to start to feel a sense of forward momentum, but there is a caveat here something to be mindful of, and that has to do with Saturn. As much as Uranus speaks to freedom, it is Saturn that can speak to limitations. And these two planets actually are next to each other in terms of how far they are from the sun. And so up until very recently in human history, uh, the late 1770s is when Uranus was discovered. Up until then, Saturn was the limits of the known world, of the known universe. And then Uranus gets discovered and everything we knew about ourselves, about what it means to be human, about our potential, our worldview, just about everything, the definition of science itself, all of it changed in an instant. And so it is now that we can understand Saturn that much more connected to that sense of limitation, restriction, but also responsibility. And when I look at Mercury squaring Saturn now this week, I think about the phrase that freedom comes through responsibility, not from responsibility. And it asks us to consider what it is that freedom is for us, uniquely for us and what responsibility we have to align with it. This particular alignment of Saturn and Mercury is going to dominate this week. Because Mercury is moving so slowly in the sky, slowing right down to a standstill, technically going forward on Tuesday, but because Saturn already slow moving and Mercury unusually so slow moving, this energy is going to be playing out throughout the week. It is Sunday and Thursday that the exact moments of connection do occur. However, again, we're going to feel this energy all week. And all of us in some way are going to be asking ourselves, what does it look like to take responsibility? And where is it that we can grow up where it comes to our understanding of freedom? Now, this is going to be deeply personal for each of us. Freedom means different things to different people. And that is part of what is so great about being a human being and sharing this earthly experience 
with others is that there is so much diversity of thought, of mind, of perception, and of articulation. And these certain values or concepts that we hold ultimately, how they are defined, especially these very archetypal concepts like freedom, like what it means to be free thinking, uh, like what it means to communicate itself, all of these and how we communicate, what we mean when we say certain things, all of this ultimately can come down to a perspective that is personal and yet is it rational? Is it real? Is it grounded? These are going to be part of the considerations now. Now, a square of Saturn can represent uh, a sense of limitation as well and a sense of uh, not necessarily denials, but there can be delays here. And as Mercury is moving forward, all of us, I think, are going to be asking ourselves, is it worth the sacrifice? Is it worth the time? Time very strongly associated with Saturn as well. Is this worth the effort? Um, is it that in pursuing a particular pathway, this is where I'm going to find self-respect or not? Is it worth the journey or not? I think that these are going to be central questions for a lot of us out there in at least one area of life now. And as a general principle, this is Mercury in the sign of Libra, in the later degrees of the sign of Libra. And Libra has to do with compromise, diplomacy. It has to do with our one-on-one -on -one interactions with others and our willingness to consider other perspectives. Squaring Saturn now, we may see the need. We may show ourselves that we have a responsibility to ourselves and to others to consider other perspectives at this time. And it may be now that we may find these very efforts to understand others, uh, to be restrictive in some way, to be especially challenging. And yet the potential is there to put in the time to find that understanding, to put in the work that sometimes meaningful compromise entails. Now, of course, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about this energy for the collective, in particular, a subject that I have not been talking about very diligently so, and that is the uh, US election. And I may cut this out, to be very honest with you, only because I know how charged this time can feel. Mars is retrograde. That alone can bring energy and frustrations to the surface. And this week, Mars is slowing right down. Next week, at the end of next week, going direct. And so that also means that Mars energy, the energy of passion and determination, is especially high. And so as much as it is, and especially with Mercury squaring Saturn, I think this is going to be part of inviting us to cultivate patience with each other because our own emotions, our own desires are going to feel so strong. But the thing is, as it said, no person is an island. None of us truly are in isolation. We are all dependent on each other. That is part of, again, going back to this idea of the beautiful, diverse, and interconnected and holistic world that we live in and that we have created. We rely on, we depend on others. It is Mars now slowing right down to a standstill that can become a bit of an adrenaline junkie. And all of us are susceptible to that and all of us are gonna to have to be mindful of that. But for all that, there is also going to be an awareness that where it is that we can cultivate patience and where it is that we can be willing at least to reach out to others, consider other ways of perception, the more it is that that work, although hard, may very well be worth it. And so on a very mundane, very surface level, let me say this, Mercury goes direct on election day. <laughs> the last time we had that happen, it was uh, the election of 2000. And that was when we had delayed results as well. And so we've been in a retrograde, whatever information, communication, and also because Mercury speaks to the media, all of that is not necessarily uh, cut and dried, not necessarily straightforward. And as Mercury is going to go direct on the US election day and Neptune is going to be squaring the nodes, chances are 
unlikely that we are going to have a final answer on election night. Now, I also want to add this. Where the sun is on election day, that degree of the zodiac, that exact place in the sky is exactly where Mercury was when he went retrograde back in mid-October. And I believe that it will likely not be until we navigate forward until November 19th, as far as November 19th, uh, when Mercury returns to where he was when he first went retrograde. And that is the end of the Mercury shadow. It may not be until we get there that we may truly know what the events of Tuesday are going to mean in the bigger picture. That sense of clarity may not set in until then. And so as much as it is that we can be patient with ourselves, with each other, with our desires, with our frustrations, with our hopes, um, and of course, and how it is that we express all of that, uh, I think the better it is that we are gonna be able to navigate this time. Now, in our own lives, I'm going to invite you to go back and think of what was happening in your life right around September 21st, September 22nd, and even September 23rd, because it was right around that time that Mercury entered shadow. Mercury was then where it is that he has retrograded to, returned to this week. And it was also then in late September that Mercury connected with Saturn for the first time in this type of alignment, this alignment with Saturn that he is going to hold throughout this week. In some way, whatever is happening in our own individual journeys, it will in some way reflect and hearken to what was taking place for us back in late September. See, this is where it becomes a really good idea to keep, whether it is a journal, even if you're just writing down a few key words, especially when we have these very important turning point moments, like we had back in late September, it invites us to then ultimately to forge a deepening relationship to the sky, because it is through observation that we cultivate that personal connection and the sky can speak to us that much more. And so, Think about what was happening for you, but also consider what was happening for the collective. That's not as hard to do. It actually is pretty straightforward to look at maybe what headlines were playing out around that time, because what takes place now will in some way speak to what was happening back then. But this is really where our lessons come together as Mercury goes forward and starts to make its final alignments that characterize a particular Mercury retrograde season. It is going to be now with these alignments that we are going to be invited to consider what our learning has been for this larger Mercury retrograde season, but also to bring things full circle, to come to final understandings and final decisions as part of moving forward from here. I do want to touch very quickly on uh, some other celestial connections that are taking place, in particular conversations that are called a quincunx. Now, a quincunx is uh, a conversation between two planets that can have two energies needing to integrate, needing to work together, sometimes very quickly so, but it also offers the potential for a quick resolution as well. Uh, when two planets are speaking with this type of alignment, sometimes they don't really know how to integrate, how to get along, and yet there's a feeling that they have to find a way to work together. And in so doing, the opportunity arises by surprise, but also what we learn and the potential to resolve can have a quick moving surprise quality to it as well. And so, it is going to be right around Tuesday that Venus will align with Uranus in this very type of conversation called a quincunx. Now, Venus, of course, is goddess of love and beauty and joy and pleasure. Speaking with Uranus in this way, it can suggest plans changing, outcomes being different than anticipated. Uh, it can speak to sort of uh, very surprise and possibly even awkward romantic moments. I want to be very straightforward with you here. Decisions that we may make fashion wise. I know a little something about that. They don't always go as planned and they don't always and aren't always a hit. And yet 
um, we can still have a lot of fun. And that's the thing. This energy can give us some really great stories to tell. Uh, it can provide us with very spontaneous moments to have a lot of fun. The fact that Venus is in her home sign of Libra means that she already is operating with some strength. And it does speak to the desire that we may have to find ease and genuine commonality with others, with Uranus speaking with that Venus, the opportunity to find that understanding and commonality, that mind level connection that can't help but make things easier. Well, the opportunity to make those connections can come about very spontaneously, very much by surprise. Now, as we get to the end of the week, it will be the sun that connects with Mars. Again, this is an alignment called a quincunx. And that means that these two energies, both of them are very hot, are fire, right? Both of them connect with fire. Uh, both of them have a way, Mars and the sun have a way of heightening each other's energies. And this is a very quick moment, but it can also carry a certain urgency to it, an adrenaline to it uh, that asks for some resolution. It is the sun now in the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio has to do in its highest understanding. It has to do with truth. It has to do with being willing to see beyond the superficial, being willing to see beyond the surface and get to the core of a matter. But it is also when we are willing to look beyond what is on the surface, the nitty gritty, that thing that people may sometimes reject or deny that is there, the, the taboo, even the shadow itself. It is Scorpio that finds beauty there that finds something authentic and nitty and gritty and yet inspiring. And that is part of what makes Scorpio energy so deeply transformative. It is our appreciation and our perspective of what either has come before or what lies within, the resilience that lies within. And so it is Mars, the ancient ruling planet of Scorpio, connecting with that sun, Mars is strong right now in its home sign of Aries, retrograde, but slowing down to a standstill, almost stationary now as we move through this week, and especially by the time we get to the end of the week. And this is going to represent an opportunity for a lot of us very quickly to get in touch with a spirit of determination. The determination and the single-minded focus to find what is true for us, to dig deep, to search within, and in that space, those parts of us that we don't necessarily share with others, to find a depth of acceptance, to do the work that wisdom requires, to find the courage to do that work, I think that is going to be part of the very spontaneous and quick moving opportunity that could find us at the end of the week. Keep in mind with this, there is a sense of impulsiveness. There is a sense of urgency here, but it can also lend itself to effort that is rewarded. What I love about this week for us, well, of course, it is Mercury Direct. I think that is the star of the show now. That is the very big news. Mercury finally moving forward, I think, is going to be very welcome now. It is this week that Mercury is in Libra, has just dipped back into Libra, going direct here. Next week, we'll return to the sign of Scorpio. So of course, I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way, but just know this is a pivotal and important moment, a moment of self-reflection, self-honesty, and asking ourselves, what is worth the effort? What are our true responsibilities to others and to ourselves? And where is it by embracing the right thing to do, the responsible thing to do, we ultimately can find things within ourselves to respect. In fact, that can be a space where self-respect is won, is cultivated, is strengthened. Now, all of us ultimately in our higher sense have a responsibility to own our own happiness. You alone are responsible for your own happiness. Now, how other people fit into that, whether they serve as points of understanding, well, that may very well be part of this energy with Mercury in the sign of Libra in the sign of partnership. 
But what this energy can also grant us is perspective, the understanding that what freedom means, what happiness means, what security means, what fun even means, right, is so unique to each of us. And ultimately, along the way, we may find ourselves in these very spontaneous sort of ripping off a Band-Aid moment where we're able to leave the burdens and the voices of, of whatever perceptions that never really were ours so that we can embrace something that feels real, that feels strong, that feels grounded. It is in that space that we may find a new resolve, a new determination to truly be ourselves with Venus connecting with Uranus to trust our heart in the most surprising ways, in the most unlikely ways. And to know that when we do trust ourselves, trust our heart, be willing to listen to others, but also be willing to consider what genuine happiness means for us, well, that very well may be a pathway towards a greater, deeper, and more significant joy than we've known before. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Synchronicity University is stepping up into full gear as we enter this month. Exciting classes coming up. Not only does the November speaker series begin this Wednesday, but this coming weekend on Saturday, the autumn session part two is underway as well. So for the speaker series, we are going to have some of the most brilliant minds in astrology today speaking for us, to us, teaching us, uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. So let me introduce you to some of these incredible teachers. Uh, one of my very dear friends, the absolute ball of love, Christopher Renstrom. Now he has recently published a book uh, called Cosmic Calendar, and uh, this book is getting rave reviews all over the place. So many people are very excited about this in the astrology world and outside as well. He recently had a raving review from Isaac Mizrahi. So you know that this book is really making a splash out there in the world. And he is going to be teaching his very first class on this book to us. So that is something that absolutely we can look forward to. Uh, he really is very successful, very brilliant, very accomplished, and I'm so excited to share Christopher Renstrom with you. Another big dog astrologer, that is Frank Clifford. Now, Frank Clifford is the president of the London School of Astrology, the very prestigious London School of Astrology, uh, the author of several books as well. And he is going to be teaching a class that I think is so practical, so usable by so many people, which is exploring the Ascendant and Midheaven combination. So there are 36 possible combinations that you can have in your chart of the Ascendant plus the Midheaven. So for example, if you have the Ascendant in Aries, you will have either your Midheaven in Capricorn, in Sagittarius, or in Aquarius. So he's going to go through each one of those 36 possible combinations, going through each of the signs there, so that you can start to understand in a very practical way your own chart. Frank really is a star in the astrology world and I'm so excited to share him with you. Other astrologers, you have seen Adama Sese on my YouTube channel before. Uh, she is the person behind Lilith Astrology. Uh, she has so much charisma, so much insight, so much brilliance, and I'm really excited to share her with you as well. And she's going to be teaching about life purpose, bringing her own perspective to help you to understand your chart. We will also have Helene Cerizo from Heart House Astrology. She'll be sharing about family patterns in the astrology chart. She's been on my channel a couple of times as well. Uh, always popular, always brilliant. And we are going to have the very brilliant Zamboni Funk and his 
talk is look for the helpers. And that is looking at Jupiter moving from Aquarius to Pisces to Aquarius again throughout 2021. So that is going to be a class that focuses on forecasting and what Jupiter's movements in 2021 are going to mean for all of us. So there's so much here to learn, so much to look forward to, and I'm really excited to share these amazing speakers with you. You can learn more and sign up. Link is in the description below or visit synchronicityuniversity.com. And the autumn series part two begins this coming Saturday as well. Uh, we are going to have so much fun together. Uh, the classes include two classes on Mercury, Lilith part two. So this is where we're going to build on the first part lesson of last class and now look at Lilith in aspect to planets and points in the astrology chart. And then we're going to have two classes on tarot, the minor uh, the Minor Arcana. This is Tarot for Astrologers. So in the last session, in the Autumn Session Part 1, I did two classes on the Major Arcana. Now we're going to focus on the Minor Arcana uh, for this coming period. Now one brand new offering that you will find at SynchronicityUniversity.com is called the Tarot Package. And this Tarot Package gives you class passes, uh, not only to the downloads of the last uh, session where we looked at the major arcana in Tarot for Astrologers, but also puts you on the list to join us live for those two classes of the minor arcana Tarot for Astrologers. And again, you'll get the downloads for those as well if you can't join us live. So if you know that you're really interested in exploring Tarot for Astrologers, that is set up for you at SynchronicityUniversity.com. You can sign up for any of the classes I mentioned or one or two or more, uh, all of that in the link in the description below. There is just one week left to get one or all of my books signed by me, inscribed by me for the holiday season. And so right now I am offering, if it is that you or you know somebody who is a friend or fan of my work, thank you so much uh, for that. I know that there are people who love my work and it means so much to me. But if you know that they would appreciate and you would like to give them or yourself a signed copy of one of my books, perhaps even inscribed to them as well, uh, it is this week that is going to be the last week where you will get a chance to actually purchase one of these books directly from me. And so please log on to my website, NadiaShaw.com. To place that order. I'm going to be heading back home to Cancun in about two weeks time. And so I want to be sure that I complete this. I sign them. I inscribe them. I put them in the mail, send them off by courier to whoever it is that does want one of these, who does order one of these uh, before it is that I leave. So there's plenty of time before the holidays arrive for you to be able to get these books in time to offer them as a gift. And so if that is something that you know somebody in your life would appreciate or you would appreciate, please visit my website, NadiaShaw.com or link in the description below. And that'll take you right to the page so that you can secure that. And from there, you let me know what inscription you want. And I'm very happy to include that. And again, thank you so much for being a friend and fan of my work, for loving my work as you do. And so many of you do. Thank you. And finally, you can get my unique take on your unique birth chart by logging on to Cosmogram. Uh, link is in the description below. I have a partnership with Cosmogram now. And what happens is you click on that link, you're redirected to their site, you put in your birth data, and within hours, you will be emailed a PDF of the different sections of your birth chart, the different planets that are there, how they are aspecting other planets in your chart, um, how it is that the sign that a particular planet is in, the house that it's in, what does that mean for you? How would I interpret that? It's all there in PDF or on paper if you choose to print it out uh, available to you. And I hope that you love it. I know that so many people have ordered these. A lot of people do appreciate it, do cherish it, do love it. And that really does mean so much to me. This was a labor of love to put together all the sections and now to have it available to you and to have it so appreciated, just thank you for that. And if you wanna know what you can expect, there's actually a sample copy available on the Cosmogram page as well. So again, click on the link in the description below and I hope that you absolutely love it and cherish it always.
and thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. You may be wondering, why am I all decked out and glittery right now? I think it's Uranus Quincunx uh, Venus, right? The energy we're moving towards. I've just had this in my closet for like two years. I've been anticipating wearing it and I just said, you know what? I'm gonna wear it now. So here it is, that's how it goes. Um, and why not, you know, why not? Just enjoy yourself, enjoy your life. As I'm recording this, it is Halloween. Um, and so to me, Halloween is just so special. Uh, they say that the veil between the worlds is especially thin. The wisdom of our ancestors is available to us. Now in Mexico, this is, and these are the, the Dia de Muertos days and that is the what we call the day of the dead but it goes right to november 2nd so even the first days of this week and it is a time of honoring our ancestors is really what it comes down to there's a movie that i saw uh and i actually when i was in europe back in 2017 i was doing a european tour and i uh watched this movie every day every time i got on an airplane i watched this movie as well and i cried every time i watched it but i loved it so much uh, and it is called Coco, that's the movie, Coco, and it is a, sort of a computer animation and it's all about Dia de Muertos and what it means. And this movie is in all kinds of languages as well. It's available in English and Spanish, it's got really great music. So that's my Halloween recommendation. You may wanna have a look at that. And uh, it does help to remember that we are here as a result of love. That truly is the case. We would not be here were it not for the love of others. As we move through life, the small moments, the nods, the exchanges, the smiles that we get from others, these are acts of love. Uh, of course, we think about the love of our ancestors, our direct physical ancestors, but wherever it is that we find ourselves in the world, and whenever it is that we connect with a way of thinking, a system or school of thought or philosophy or intellectual development, like all of that ultimately does connect us to an ancestry. We become the descendants of that very lineage. And to me, this is exactly what this time of year reminds us of. And I also love how there are so many ways in which we are and can be immortal, right? When we create art, when we write, all of these things we put out into the world, they become part of the collective, whether it's the collective wisdom, the collective knowledge, the collective beauty, uh, the collective creativity. But what also happens is that love makes us immortal as well. The love of others makes us possible, past, present, and future. And that's what this time of year always reminds me of. So wherever you are in your life right now, no matter how you feel or have felt, the questions about the future, uh, the regrets of the past, whatever they may be, at the end of the day, it is love that has brought you here to this moment. And it is love that will carry you and each of us forward. Thank you. Thank you so much again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.